Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. So today um, I'm going to do a tutorial on how I colored this, the, stock, the, the yarn part of the stocking. The rest of this, uh, you know, was just various kinds of pencils from, I think, Black Widows to Prismas. Uh, anyway, I put out in the My Community tab, which I can do now, um, if anybody would like to see how I did this part of it, because it, it just came out so good. I was like, ooh. And so, I'm going to do that. This is the book that it came from. Um, I did not, I probably will never actually color in this book. Uh, the shipping, you know, between the cost of the book and the shipping, you know, it, it was about 50 some dollars for this book. <laughs> it's crazy. But as you can see, it's absolutely stunning. I mean, right? I mean, it's just, who, who does coloring books like that anymore? Like, it's just stamped in there, not, you know, just laid on. I mean, the book itself is a work of art. There is, if you go to my flip throughs, playlist there is a flip through of this book and i also did this cover image right i think no it wasn't this image i did the one with the um the hold on i'll show you real quick uh do do see if i can find it no oh this book is amazing as you can tell it's it's absolutely amazing is it not let's see I'll sh if i can find the book i image i actually did That's strange. There it is. This one. I did this one. And I, I printed it out on a mixed media paper. Great, great on mixed media paper. Uh, it came out so good. So, but because the book is essentially irreplaceable to me, I don't have, you know, 50, 50 some dollars to go spending on books all the time. I will make copies of the images and just color those. Um, I may do this one in time because it, there's several of them. Um, see, there's another one. Uh, I'm not sure what this part is about. If we're supposed to write here, I'm not sure what the deal with this is exactly, but anyway, yeah. Oh, and just as a FY, Chris Chang, did a fabulous um, speed color slash uh, color long of this image. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, you must go take a look at it. Um, I took copious amounts of notes. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So, um, that is the book that it came from. Stunning. I love this book so much. I, tr I treat it like the gold that it is. So, I have two two ways I'm going to approach this. Um, so there's this is the finished part, and I have some gray tone paper, which is basically this paper. Uh, and I'm going to do a little bit of it to show you how it looks on the gray tone paper. And if you if you don't have the ability to scan these you can always take a picture of it and take it to like a ups or office supply place and they can scan it onto the paper for you um the, you know i have a scanner that's attached to my one of my printers and i also have a handheld scanner that's about yay big but yay big i did a little video video about it um so that makes that easy um and I also printed it out on white paper. White's really not my first choice because of this um, and, and this. So it makes it a little bit harder and it, you have to change your approach a little bit. Like you can't lay down your white highlights first um, when you do white. So, you know, you have to kind of do things a little backwards. Um, so what i'm going to do is i have some prismas and i have some luminance some karandash and it's karandash by the way not karandash okay it's karandash 
I originally did this image in mostly cron dash with a little Prisma, um, but I thought it would be helpful to try and come up with a Prisma equivalent to the best of my abilities. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do first is we're going to do the um, luminance, which is what I did in the first place. So I'm gonna do a little bit on the gray tone and I'm gonna do a little bit on the white paper. Because I know a lot of people don't necessarily have gray tone paper or they're afraid of it. And that's a whole nother thing. Um, I highly recommend when you're doing Christmas, a lot of Christmas type images with things like the snow, I highly recommend gray toned paper. It makes the white pop so much easier. Uh, you can also use tan tone paper, but I highly recommend gray tone paper it's to me it's the best for Chris a lot of Christmas images but I also know that a lot of people just don't have that so that's why I'm kind of gonna skip to a little bit of both um, so the first image that I our first image words are hard the first pencil that I used uh, that I laid down was in fact not white I used um, a little bit of the um, permanent red, or well, it says, per yeah, permanent red, sorry. And I believe, let me, I am blind as a bat, y'all, so excuse the magnifier. Uh, 61. Yeah, I, I just, bleh, I can't see for squats sometimes. So I basically just kind of did a light layer of permanent and I'll do a couple of these just so you know for reference now the other thing too when you're doing a, a, a piece like this is to sort of scatter your your highlights uh, and your uh, a little bit because if you as you see here they're not all going to be uniform because it's 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 like yarn so it, it, your shadows and your highlights are kind of gonna be a little bit scattered um, because the fabric will be not all like I don't know f kind of flat like this in a way it's it's gonna have a lot more movement so just you know bear that in mind um, when you're doing that, like say over here, for example, I'll do a little bit over here. Uh, I would probably use a little more, um, I would probably make my shadow area a little bit more pronounced right in here and a little bit up in here, but I'm not going to have as wide a highlight here as I would right here. Uh, because of the way it's kind of the yarn is positioned on the stocking. So the next color that I used, if I remember correctly, I forgot to take a picture. I usually take a picture of my pencils and then I put it into either my Pinterest or into a file that I have labeled color combos. You know, so I don't forget stuff like this. It's easier than trying to write it in a, like a swatch book or whatever. Um, and this is 589 Crimson uh, Azuline. Oh, Lord, I can, I hope I pronounced that right. That is one pronunciation I'm a little non unsure of. But it's, it's, um, it's a nice color. And as I said, it is... 589 so and I just kind of layered over that a little bit and then went into the shadows now if you pay attention when you do yarn like this pay attention to the shadow uh, to the line marks that the artist will give you you know like for example here right in here 
um, I'll probably make that a little bit lighter than I will like right in here because she's kind I can use that to kind of enunciate a or emphasize I should say a lighter area within that small section so Not very good at explaining stuff sometimes. I, you know, I, I kind of, I apologize if I stumble over my words a little bit. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard for me to find the right words. It's like, I know what I know, but trying to, trying to uh, get that out there in a way that makes sense is sometimes a challenge for me. But I do my best. I love this Christmas music. It's so pretty. And I'm going over the highlighted area just a little bit, not too heavy, but just lightly and then a little heavier in the shadow areas. If that makes any sense. And remember, because this is kind of close to up here, I'm probably going to make and up in here too, I'm probably going to make the shadow area a little more pronounced, but it's going to, the highlights right in here are going to be a little bit stronger. Okay. So my next color is going to be, I grab my old, old lady magnifying glass, Scarlet. And it is uh, 70. This comes in the original uh, s small set. It, it uh, like the small set you can buy. This this is in that set. I think the other two are not. Um, they come in the larger sets, but this is in the basic set. And I'm gonna go over the shadow or not shadow the highlight area a little bit. I know you're mixing, normally I don't mix um, pinks with oranges like this. Uh, normally it's a no-no. You should generally keep them kind of the same. But in this case, as you can see by this image, it worked out really well. Um, normally it does not. I, I don't know. It just is one of those things like it just worked out. And I thought maybe, you know, folks would like to kind of see how I did it. Um, okay, so my next step is, and I'm looking for the pencil. Ta -da. This is the shadow shadow area, <laughs> like the darkest part. And it is Carmine Lake um, 575. Okay. Oh, almost forgot one. Now I did I did my best to um, match them up with the prismas. Um, uh, I hope it's it, it should be fairly close. It might not be exactly the same, but it should be close enough to at least give you an idea. Uh, I did my best. Now I'm going to take this shadow area and I'm going to kind of bring it in just a little bit. And you, you need to remember to adjust your, your, the length of your shadows and, and the placement of your shadows and highlights according to how they are on the image. Because you, if you do it all 100% exactly the same. It's going to look really flat. So here, as I said, I'm going to bring this shadow in a little further than I would like to say even down here on the this bottom section because it's kind of this this right here is going to cast a little bit of a shadow. So the highlight is not going to be as strong up there, and that goes for actually this part here too. It's not going to be as strong, and this part's going to be all this color right here.
but the highlight in, on the top part is not going to be that strong. And don't push too hard, especially with the, the two pencils, the Krondosh and the um, Prisma, because they will snap. Okay, so I'm going to make these a little bit stronger through here, but not that one section, because I want that to be a little bit lighter. Normally, I would suggest holding your pencil further back if you have a heavy hand um, to kind of hold it back, but I've trained myself to kind of not do that. It takes practice, and if you do color with a heavy hand, don't just practice like this okay now when you're doing the fine area like here you're gonna it's good you're gonna have to go in a little bit and choke it a little bit because it gives you more control um and i'm gonna highlight the uh the little marks that the artist put in just because i they sort of disappeared on me a little bit and it's okay to reintroduce those. There we go. Yeah. All right, so the other color that I'm going to use is pink white and I'm telling you this color right here you guys is is especially this time of year is probably the color that I use the most I absolutely adore this color um I don't even need to like look at the name you know of it but um let's see if I can get the number 581 um this is an amazing amazing color for when you're doing stuff like this or even uh, like a candy cane I used it right in here it is a phenomenally amazing color and again normally I don't mix my orange tones and my pink tones like this but it just I was like stunned at how well it worked out <laughs> I was like whoa okay then so I'm going to lightly go over the shadow area with the pink white just in that one section that I wanted to highlight a little bit uh, right in here and up in here I think there was one I think there was one up here and then I'm going to go over the center part just a little bit to sort of cool it down a little And that, I think, is this pencil right here, I think is the key as to why it's still, even though I mixed my orange tones and my pink tones, this pencil right here is the key as to why it worked. And I have a Prisma, I think a, what is roughly a Prisma equivalent. Some of my pencil combinations for the Prisma, you will have to make sure that you, you're going to have to play around with it a little bit um, because it works depending on how hard, how much pressure you use with one pencil versus the other. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you in a little bit what I mean. If you use too much of one pencil, it's not going to work. It's not going to look right. You see how that sort of cools that down a little bit and introduces that warm tone or cool tone, excuse me. I love this music. It's from Christmas uh, Instrumental Christmas Songs uh, by Mr. Snooze. <laughs> I don't know, but I like it. Um, now, what I'm going to do is basically do my layers. I'm going to bring back my um, scarlet, and I'm just going to basically layer. And I'm going to play around with it until I, you know, get the layers that I want. Um, that's kind of the key to it is is just being patient and 
just doing your layers. Pencil work is is not a speedy thing. I mean, if you if you're doing it with some serious intent. Now, if you're just coloring just to you know for therapy or whatever, you know, it, it's not nothing nothing to be concerned about. But if you're coloring because you want it to look really, really, really good, like you're really serious about it, um, then you know these things do matter. <laughs> they just brought in an organ. Wow. Nobody plays organs anymore, man. I'm telling you guys in my day, like, if you ever listen to some of the old 70s rock music, even had organs in there. Uh, it, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a whole different thing to hear a rock song with organ music, like organs in it. It's fabulous. It's just, it leaves a very unique uh, sound. And you see how this kind of just interplays the different... Um... There, see? And you just, you just have to play around with it. I'm probably going to bring in a little bit of white here. I hope that's not too loud. I thought I'd get get us all in the spirit maybe see it's getting there do you see how it's starting to kind of resemble it a little bit it's it's getting there you just have to you just have to keep layering and fiddling with it and, and, and playing around with it. And eventually it will, it'll get there. Now I also, cha I also changed it up a little bit because I think I had a set, I had an, I had a, I had it recorded in my book as using a certain set of pencils. And I think I added this in. And like I said, I forgot to take a picture of what I did with, with these. Just like, I, I took a picture of what I used for the candy cane, but not the stocking. <laughs> I was like, really? Okay. It's just going to be like that. <laughs> so, basically just, you know messing with it and eventually it'll get to where you want it to and I probably am gonna smush it one of the keys to it I know a lot of people just smush until the the pencil smush together and you can do that um, but then it just requires a lot more layers um, so if you don't feel like adding you know 59 million layers um, then uh, you can use like a blender pencil or some Gamsol, which is like a mineral spirits. You know, that's a whole nother thing though. <laughs> I need to, I think, do a video about that because there's, there's, there's many ways to blend colored pencils. Um, I think I'm about used up the tooth. So I'm going to add in a little more. I got to put my pencil back here. I'm going to add a little more of the pink white. Make sure I grab the right pencil. Okay. I want to add just a little bit more right here. And you can use this to blend if you want. I kind of tried that and I, I don't know. I wasn't too happy about it. I, I liked it better with the Crondosh blender. Okay, let's see if it's ready. And also one of the things when you use a, um, a Crondosh blender, you can, if you don't, as long as you don't go too hard, with it, um, you can layer some pencil work over it, 
but you got to be really careful when you're using these. If you go too hardcore with it, like you, A, you'll snap it, and B, you'll strip too much pencil off of the paper, and it will mess up your work. I found that out the hard way. So when you're initially doing a test like this, um, don't push too hard. Um, so let's let's give. I'm pushing with like a medium pressure, just to see if I've got enough layers. And also check to make sure you don't have too much wax uh, under your. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Um, the wax that's on it kind of want you want to kind of clean that off every so often unless you want it to smush a lot in that case you know leave it on um it will help spread the wax pencil uh, around a little bit more so but if you're wanting to be very careful about where it how it smushes then i would you know keep an eye on the wax buildup I started to sing to this song because I know it a lot, but it's like, eh, they don't want to hear me sing. Nope. Although I don't do too bad, but I have a, I have an old lady voice, so <laughs> I don't think you guys want to hear that. Let's see. Gets rid of some of the wax. You can use a little black. Ah, I kind of forgot that. Hold on. Let's finish this part. Now, what you can do is if you're not happy with the depth, and that's actually not, that's pretty close. It's not quite as bright, but you can add, you know, you can add in, if you want it a little brighter, I actually kind of like this darkness. Um, you can just, you know, add some more pink or white over it to kind of reintroduce that highlight a little bit more. You can do that. Um, I actually kind of like that, so I'm going to leave it. But take your black pen. Oh, shoot. I used the Prisma. Sorry. Um, here's the black Krondash Luminance. Um, by the way, the Luminance are wax-based. They're Pablo's or oil. So they're like, like Faber-Castell kind of oil. So, I'm just going to go in You basically just kind of go in like that. And you see how it, may, it reintroduces those, um, yeah, that's a little too strong. I'll have to go back over that. I don't like that. Uh, and it kind of reintroduces those lines a little bit. And I can color just a little bit over here. And it basically what it does is it reintroduces those shadows in a little bit darker way. Black is like a really important thing if you want to um, really get a lot of depth. Okay, so my bonus tip is how you can do snow on white paper. Okay. And the trick is to using using these things. Your grays and this. Now for this, I also use some glitter um, pen. I think I use like a glitter pen. You don't have to do that. I mean, I think it looks pretty, um, but it does help it to stand out also, but that's optional. But first you want to take your, um, find out where your shadows are. In this case, it's going to be back in here. And kind of around the ends. 
Now you're thinking, you're just going to go over this with a Posca. You'll see what I mean. You just kind of go around the edge. I'm kind of doing a quickie job of this. Normally I would, you know, take my time. We just kind of go around the edge like this. And there's a little bit of shadow right here. I'm kind of go like that. And just mark out where your where your shadows are. Now you can actually instead of a Posca, hold on. All right, so I'm going to continue to add in a little bit of, very lightly. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add in a little bit more. Uh, this is uh, a 90% warm gray. And normally I don't mix my cools and my warms, but in this case I am. And I'm just using it very sparingly in a few places. Very lightly. That should be about right. All right. Now, you, I'm going to obviously add some white. Now you're thinking you're adding white and white. There's a reason. I want to kind of lightly go over this just to give it a little blend before I do this other thing that I'm going to do. And don't worry if you don't have the exact materials that I'm using. This this can be adapted for other, you know, pencils and, and stuff. It can be adapted for other, with other things. This just kind of gives you a, a general idea of one way that it could be. All right. One of the ways that you can do this is with a Posca. Now they they come in different sizes and colors. Um, like for example, see how different they are? <laughs> so, because I'm covering a larger area, I wanna use the bigger Posca. You always wanna take your Posca and Excuse the, the, and do this. Do it like a pump, and then just kind of go like that, and that just kind of ensures that the the tip is, you know, coated and stuff with the, whatever you know the paint. Sorry. And Poscas, by the way, are water soluble, so if you lay some Posca down and then you like say lay some water or color pencils and you activate it, you're going to end up activating that Posca. So just beware. They're not, they're, they're not like acrylic paint pens. They, these are water soluble, which is kind of a good thing. And you see, so you can kind of go like this if you want. And this go, this does a lot, the larger areas really nicely. Now this is drawing paper, so I have to kind of be careful. Um, 
I'll probably pull out my uh, smaller one in a minute. And this is, I know it's covering up the little marks. I, I kind of don't care. It, it, you can always add those back in if you really want to. But I want to get a nice, even, be careful, like I said, these can explode. So you, oops, sorry. You want to be careful uh, how much you push in because you can end up with trouble <laughs> I said I've had them explode on me and it, it especially when you're just highlighting something it, it kind of makes you want to cry <sighs> now since I got the larger areas done I'm going to come in with the smaller Fosco in which I got to pump real quick to make sure it's and you'll hear like a little ball. That's, there's a, like a little ball inside it that sort of mixes it up and whatever. Um, you see all the Japanese on it. <laughs> okay. One of the tricks to getting texture is to take a smaller Posca. I wish I had one that wasn't quite as fine as this one, but I actually need to order some more Puskas. I, my favorite one that has like a medium point, uh, I just ran out of it last night. <laughs> but it's good for areas like this. And you just kind of go over it with the paint pen and it adds that texture in. And you can go like this in little circles and it'll, it'll make it seem fluffy. If you don't want that, you can just, you know, do regular lines. But another thing that you can do that you can also color over, which is important, okay? Dr. Mighton's Bleed Proof White. I know a couple of streamers overseas that use this stuff. Um, it's actually kind of amazing. I, oh, I will say this though. It does not smell good at all. <laughs> now, you want a brush that is somewhat stiff, but not like hard, hard. So you don't want a watercolor brush. Uh, you want something with a little, a little bit of a, a resistance. And you just kind of pick it up. It, this is like Posca in a jar. <laughs> It's almost like white out and Posca had a baby. <laughs> now this is where you can really get your um your texture. I'm sorry, I'm just making sure I was on. You just kind of This is a little stiff. And you just kind of add it in and it makes it seem all nice and fluffy it's it's a little bit like like I said it's like Posca in a jar and white out kind of and just kind of going around in little circles and just I think I could have used a stiffer brush, but either way. Um, now, you want to add in some of those shadows back. So I'm going to add my um, my gray. And this is a 20% uh, cool gray. And this was a 10% cool gray. Um, make sure, oh, make sure it's dry too. Okay. So let's, let's uh, make sure that's dry. All right, so I made sure that it was nice and dry, and that's really important, okay? You don't want to um, go back over it when it's wet because it's going to be a mess. Oh, and I'm also going to use my 90% gray to reintroduce a little bit of these lines. Just a little bit. Because I can still sort of see them a little.
And you can just make up your own. I mean, if you can't see the lines still, just make up your own. It doesn't matter. Kind of color over this a little bit, and I'm doing my shadow areas a little bit. Sorry if I get quiet, I'm concentrating. Now, I'm going to use my 20% gray to kind of soften that a little bit. You have to be careful though because you can end up with um, silver. And I'm going to have to go back over this because it's, I think I should have used a 90% warm, uh, cool gray, but that's okay. That's the nice thing about light layers. And if you don't like what you do, you can always go back over it. Assuming you haven't layered too thick a layer with your um, Posca or your Martin's ink, you have to layer light, lightly with it. And if you mess up entirely, <laughs> like I'm, like sometimes I do, just cover it with glitter. Seriously, just cover it with glitter. <sighs> glitter fixes everything. Now, you grab your white, which I'm going to figure out where my white went to. And I think I'm actually going to add a little black. Hold on. This is where you just kind of have to fuss with it. Um, if you're happy with the amount of Posca in there, um, you know, that's where you start to lay your pencils back in. And I kind of kind of uh not too happy with the way that shadow came out so i'm kind of layering it back in a little bit <laughs> sorry <laughs> my kitty's hungry <laughs> i have like a um uh, two month old cat and i think it's about lunch dinner time for him <laughs> Why that music got quiet. <laughs> there. Now, you want to take your regular, not your Posca. And don't color too heavy because you'll end up stripping the Posca off. And I'll show you what to do if it all goes sideways on you and you're not happy at all. <laughs> There's a way to fix that too. <laughs> I 
I deliberately sort of messed up part of this because I want to show you how to fix it. Take your Posca. And this time, don't go as hardcore with it. Just kind of lightly. And then smush like that. Or you can use a Q-tip or your finger. And just kind of go like that. And that way it doesn't leave such a heavy coating of it. So you're like here, it ended up being a little darker than I wanted. I did that on purpose, sort of. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think my kitty is hungry. Oh, he's so hungry. <laughs> Sorry guys, my little man is hungry. And this is why I ordered new Pascas because I am almost out of Pascas. Oh my goodness. Yep, I'm about out. But just go like that and just dab it. That way it doesn't leave such an opaque coating of it. I mean, and it comes off pretty easily. Okay. So you can also do it this way. Like say, grab your Q-tip and your Posca. And, oops, sorry. And go like that. And you gotta do it quick though, because it dries really, really quick. You see how it, and you just kind of go, go at it until it's covered as much as you want it to be. Okay. Until it's as blended as you want it to be. And you can dipple it like this if you want. Like say, for example, here, I'll show you something. If you really wanted some texture, you take this stuff and you just kind of go like that with the q-tip you see how that's kind of this is very opaque so you have to be careful um it is quite opaque and you just add in your your texture Normally I would have a little bit more care for this, but it's kind of just a quickie show. <laughs> you see how it's, it's, and you just cover it up as much as you want to. So, and there it is. You can see it on white paper. It, by giving it using your your Posca and your um, this stuff <laughs> Ta -da! and a Q-tip and some grays, you can it, it shows up. It's really important to layer layering your grays in your white. Blend it first. Add your add your Posca. To get a nice, you know, smooth layer. Then go back in with either the Posca or your, or your Mar Dr. Uh, Martin's. Uh, and this is ready available on Amazon. So are the Poscas. Now, if you totally screw up and you absolutely hate what you did, right? Because Lord knows that has happened to me so many times. Um... I can't even count. So, if that happens to you, take your glitter. I have glitter watercolor. This is just one of many I have. By the way, this stuff is amazing. Yes, I like Japanese stuff. I'm sorry for the reflection, by the way. But 
this is uh, from Kuratake. Um, I love their watercolors. I love a lot of their stuff, except for this. Do not get this, okay? This is like their version of the Tosca or whatever. I hate it because the tip um, clogs up and it's just, it's, no, do not get their, do, do not get this. It's, it's, I, no. <laughs> so, but if you really, 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 really mess up and you want to cover it up, like say, for example, um, I just really hate the whole thing. I, I actually kind of like how that came out. Um, but like say you really hate it, just take your, and it doesn't have to be this brand. It could be e any of one of these other colors or it could be any kind of glitter, you know, watercolor that you have. I would use glitter watercolor versus glitter acrylic paint because it's a little, to me, it's a little better. Uh, it, it can be any number of things. Okay. It doesn't have to be this brand or even that, that, uh, blah, I can't speak. Uh, it says no uh, 906. It could be like any of these others, but I'm going to stick with the white theme. Okay, this is just kind of like a pearlescent white and just kind of go over it like so. But do it thoughtfully. Don't just, you know, like throw it on there. And what you can do is use this to sort of Maybe hide the areas where you feel like it didn't come out like you wanted. And if it activates the Posca that's under here, don't worry about that. Because that's actually a good thing. I kind of found this out by accident. Because it blends it a little more. So I'm kind of just going like this in the areas where I had uh, shading. And the more you add, the thicker you add it, um, you know, the more opaque it's going to be. Um, if you just want a thin layer, then, you know, use more, more water and less paint. Um, it's all on how much you activate the, uh, watercolor. I've got it pretty thickly because I want to add text, that texture. And the drawing paper is actually taking it pretty well because I'm not using an excessive amount of water. Um, so that's kind of the bonus, another bonus tip is, um, don't use a ton of water. And you can see now that it's starting to blend that that uh, Martin's ink and the Posca, and it's starting to look really super nice and white, but a little bit sparkly, because it's blending all those things together. And this is really, to me, this is how I did it for my other picture. As I just blended everything together. It, inadvertently, and I was like, oh, this just looks good. <laughs> it was a happy accident. Because I had forgotten the Puskas were water soluble. Now, I did cover up some of that shading a little more than I probably originally wanted to. But, I mean, I think that looks pretty good. And let's see. Let's look at it dry. All right, so I did cover up the shading a little more than I wanted, but yeah, I think you get the idea, right? And now it's kind of sparkly too, without being like overkill. So that's that is how you can do something that is white on white paper and still have it kind of stand out without necessarily having to do a background that's like all color. That is, that is my little bonus tutorial. So, I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I will list the pencils that I used um, and the other wet media, all that stuff. I will list all that in the description. I apologize again for not being able to do live links, but I will definitely list these things in the description um, along with, um, I will list, make sure I list the book. Um, and the paper and stuff. So have a great day, guys. Stay safe and be kind to each other. Bye.